Hi everyone, this is the sixth video in the series on time intelligence subjects that I'm doing alongside Brian Julius from Enterprise DNA and we are looking at offsets today. So I hope you look forward to this. Let's look at the mechanics of those offsets first. I have an image of my day table and I've zoomed in on quarters and years. So we can see some actual movement, all right? So in purple, we have our current period. Now that current period always has an offset value of zero, right? And above that, you, in yellow, you can see everything that's in the past. So a period that is of the same grain will have a negative number uh, and of a different granularity, like here, if we look at the year, you can see here we have a zero. So it's either zero or less than zero. Okay. And for the fiscal year offset, you can see that we have three zeros and then it steps back to a negative number. Okay. And for future periods, it's actually the same. So everything that's in the future will have a positive number. Depending, of course, on the granularity of that column, it can also contain a zero. So what makes offsets powerful and a great addition to your day table? Well, first, offsets are just a sequential number at the same grain of the attribute that they represent, right? And second, offsets know no boundaries. So where quarters run from one to four and months run from one to 12, weeks from one to uh, 52 or 53, depending on the year, uh, and then start over. Uh, that is not the case for offsets, right? Offsets uh, will always show a relative position to the date and the current date. And each time a date table query gets refreshed, the logic behind those offsets get evaluated and assigns an updated value to each date in your day table. Now, in the previous video, uh, Brian spoke about assigning jobs and characteristics to functions or uh, attributes, and I really like that. So when I think about uh, offsets, I kind of think about them in the way that they are the DeLorean from Back to the Future because they allow you to move back and forth in time without using the DAX time intelligence functions. So let's recap the mechanics again briefly. So for all intents and purposes, today is the 24th of April, 2020. Here are the offset principles again. And as you can see, I have a slicer on my page, uh, which contains the weak offset value. And it now shows all values from minus 53 up to zero, meaning the current week. And April 24th is in week 17. So at this time, the extended day table, it only covers the ISO week numbers, right? So weeks will start on a Monday and all weeks will contain seven days. Now, I'm aware of the fact that that is not the same logic that is applied everywhere. There are a lot of uh, custom week requirements out there. And a couple of custom week requirements are covered in topics you can find on the Enterprise DNA forum. So you can check that, of course. If that uh, logic of the ISO week numbers does not apply to you, then think of looking at months and years from this point on. So instead of week and years, you'll be thinking months and years. Right, so here we have uh, the week and year label on our uh, table, and we also have the week offset beside it. Now, because they share the same granularity, you will notice that the week offset is a perfect sequential number range, right? There are no duplicate values and there are no missing values in that range. So of course, our total sales measure is just a regular sum mix over sales for the quantity times the price, and nothing special going on there, and it all gets aggregated to that weekly value. Now, say that my boss would always like to see the last four weeks of sales. Well, in that case, I can just change my slicer here. 
So it now only depicts those last four weeks of sales. And you can imagine that when we move through time and my date table gets updated and also new sales results uh, get um, loaded to my fact table, this will keep updating and will always show these last four weeks. Let's also explore some decks. So let's go to the examples here. Again, I have a regular table here with the week and year on the rows and the total sales measure. Now, if we wanted to calculate the previous week sales for any given value here, right, without the offsets, there's quite a bit of work to be done. So let's examine this. So if we wanted to calculate the previous week sales without offsets, we would first have to extract what the current week number is. Then we'll also have to check what the current year value is. And if we needed to skip past a year boundary, then we'll have to calculate what the max week number is for that, for that last year. So as a result, we'll have to iterate over our dates table, check if the current week is week number one. And if it is week number one, then we want the last week from the previous year. And if it's not week number one, we can just subtract one from the current week value for the current year and then sum up our total sales. So if we look at our table here, we can see that all those values perfectly aggregated, right? And if we move past a year boundary here, we can see that the last week sales for 2017 perfectly gets calculated for week number one in 2018. Now the same calculation becomes very simple if we use date table offsets, right? So let's take a look at that. So here's our measure when we use offsets. So to get the previous week value, all we have to do is get the selected uh, week offset and subtract one. Then all we have to do inside calculate is calculate total sales over all of the dates where the week offset is equal to the previous week value. And as you can see, that calculates perfectly. There are no issues when we cross a boundary in years and only for the total row there is an issue. So let me change the sort of my week and year. And as you can see, because there is no context coming from the week and year, so we cannot identify the current uh, week offset value, but we are subtracting one, the total will return at the value for the week offset that is equal to minus one. But we can adjust for that, right? Because we can use the cumulative total pattern, right? To adjust for the total. So let's see how that looks. So let me get this measure up here. Perfect. The beginning of the measure does not change, right? It's exactly the same as the previous measure we saw. But then to get the cumulative total over the all selected uh, dates, all we have to do is calculate the first week over the all selected uh, dates and subtract one from that. And we also have to identify the max week offset value from the all selected dates and subtract one from that as well. Then we can use a calculate statement again over total sales, use all dates where the week offset value is greater than or equal to the first week and the week offset value is smaller or equal to the last week. So that's the basic cumulative total pattern, right? And then we can check if we are at the grand total by using the if is in scope. So if the week and year is in scope, then we want the last week sales. But when it's not in scope, we want the last week total to be returned, right? So as you can see, we now have a correct grand total row as well. So it's pretty easy to create cumulative total patterns as well, right? And let me step back to my recap page because here we saw that you can show the last four weeks, right? Now, if we were to do that in a measure, 
right? So if we wanted to get this value calculated for the last week's sales, we can do that as well using the offsets. So this is what that looks like. So all we have to do is identify the current week offset value for the context coming from the row section. And when we have that, we can calculate total sales over all dates where the week offset is greater or equal to this week minus three and smaller than or equal to the this week value. And as you can see, this returns exactly the same value as we saw on the previous page. So offsets are incredibly dynamic. You can use them in the filter pane. You can use them inside, um, of course, uh, slicers, as we also saw. You can use them inside your DEX calculations. They're very uh, versatile. You can use them in a lot of ways. And offsets are available in the extended day table for weeks, for months, for quarters, for years, and for fiscal years. So they're giving you a lot of flexibility. So I hope you have a lot of fun exploring other use cases for these uh, calendar offsets. And I also hope you've enjoyed this short video. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA channel so you don't miss out on any new content. Thanks so much for watching. All the best.